Welcome to another online tutorial from Bellevue Fine Art Reproduction. Today we're going to walk you through um, a couple of real-time examples of us just cropping into an image and doing some of the final stages of, of uh, prepping an image so that it's ready for print and, in, and so that we understand the size that it would be printed at and we have a true 300 dpi image at a certain size with the edges cleaned up and some of the final detailings that we do to get it ready. Okay, so here we have our picture. We've taken all the time and trouble to get a good uh, photograph of our painting here. And we've lighted to the best of our ability and tried to get it shot straight on so it's square. As you can see, it's not exactly square here, so the camera was probably just a little bit off, which uh, you can certainly expect if you're, you're photographing your own work, artwork that you're never going to get that just perfect unless you have a professional setup. Um, so now we're ready to uh, we're ready to make this ready for print. And by that I mean we're going to size it and rotate it and and clean up the edges. Uh, but most importantly is the sizing. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to rotate this. We're going to rotate the canvas so that it looks like the way it would be hanging on a wall. Um, and we're going to crop into it. <clears throat> and we crop into it like this. And what we want to do is we want to get right up to the edges. You, you really don't want to lose any important detail. Um, you're going to have to go back and clean up the edges just a little bit if you're going to be using the file for for print um, so that the edges don't look dirty. And uh, There we go, we got this. And you can see the painting was not exactly square. Um, I've got a couple of options right here. Um, I can either crop it like this and then clone this area in or stretch out the painting um, or I can crop into the painting just a little bit. Um, that's really a personal choice. Um, if you don't mind losing just a little bit here, this is going to be the easiest solution just to crop it like this. But I'll go ahead and use a more difficult one because that can show you some of the things that you can do um, if you want to go kind of go crazy. and. Um, start editing your pictures. So now we have this cropped up and um, it's it's close to being square here. We'll clean some of these edges up here in just a moment. But the next thing we're going to do is look at the size. Now keep in mind when you take a, a photograph of a painting, um, especially when a painting is very large, you may not ever be able to reproduce it well uh, using just a single shot from a digital camera. You might have to go into more high-end scanning for large pieces. This case, and that's the case with this picture. This this painting was 52 inches by 32 inches. Um, so if you look at the, if you go to image, image size and look at the total number of pixels we have um, and divide that by 300 pixels per inch, which is the number of pixels that you should really have for high quality printing. Um, native pixels, not made up pixels, but um, native pixels, you'll see that really we're never going to be able to produce this very large. So we're not going to go look for a standard size on this um, image, and we're not going to certainly not going to try and up-res it up to its original um, size of 52 inches. We'd just be making up a bunch of um, garbage that won't look good. But it would be nice to get this close to something that's not a fractional number. So if I go back there, for example, you can see it's 11.3 by 6.6. .6. I'm just going to take this up to 12 inches by 7 because now that's certainly easier for printers to deal with and easier for you to deal with to wrap your head around um, that you've got an image that is 12 by 7 inches and not some fractional number. If you really want to make that exacting, what you can do is go um, change the image size, the canvas size. So if you go to image canvas size and we're going to uncheck relative and we're just going to set this to be 7 so it's exactly 12 by 7 inches. Um, now we've got something that mathematically is certainly easy to wrap your head around. Um, for the edges here we're going to go around and we're going to clean up the edges because if you're going to print this um, you really don't want these edges to look all ratty. Um, so I'm going to use the stamp tool here. The stamp tool. And I'm going to select an area and I'm just going to clean that up. And 
the stamp tool really and if you've got later versions of Photoshop where you've got content aware is really your friend when it comes to cleaning up these edges so if you're gonna go make cards or small prints or anything like that um, or if you're gonna be even submitting using these files to um, excuse me to submit for um, uh, online competitions and, and galleries and whatnot uh, gallery submissions um, they're really going to look better if you just take the time to go in and clean up these, these edges a little bit. So we're just going to go all the way around the painting like that and just go clean these all up. And you can tell that I'm sampling from different areas here <clears throat> so you don't get that sort of patterned look where you get a repeating pattern. Um, I'm going to clean up this little corner right here and now up here you can see that some of the paint doesn't really have full coverage right towards the corner but I'm gonna fix that there we go and now at this point this painting is really done in terms of having it ready for uh, for print in terms of, of sizing and cleaning up the edges so I'm gonna save that the only thing that really bothers me is this area down here where you've got a lot of spectral highlighting, um, but that's probably not something that we can deal with in this video. So there you have it. Now we've uh, resized this and cleaned up the edges, and if we go to image properties, we can see that we have an image that is 7 inches by 12 inches. Um, it's nowhere near the original size, uh, which once again was 52 inches by 32 inches. And there's no way that we could really get a reproducible image from a standard digital camera, um, or even a high-end digital camera, without um, taking the time to take multiple shots and stitch them together, which would be an entirely different tutorial. Okay, in our next example here, we've got a smaller uh, painting um, that we are going to be able to reproduce um, at, at its original size. This piece right here is um, it's 11 and a half by uh, 14 and a quarter, so it's not quite a standard size. Um, standard sizing, um, the closest standard size that you'll find in frame shops would be 11 by 14. So what we're going to do is we're going to crop this out and, and kind of get it ready and uh, clean up the edges and size it so that um, it's ready for print. So the very first thing we want to do is um, anytime an image comes out of the camera. Uh, you might want to sharpen it just a little bit. Sharpening, over sharpening is a bad thing, but any image that comes out of a camera is going to need to be sharpened just a little tiny bit. Um, so I'm going to go to filter, filter, sharpen, unsharp mask here. And I'm going to go at a radius of 1.2 pixels to and I'm gonna sharpen this at about 60 percent it's kind of a light sharpen and what you're really doing there is not making the image sharper than it originally was but sharpening actually compensates for the natural fuzziness or blur of a lens um, and brings it back to its natural state as long as you don't overdo it. So there we go. We've sharpened that. We're going to zoom out a little bit. Next thing we're going to do is crop into it. Uh, we're going to crop away all that nasty stuff on the outside that we don't want to see. Anytime you crop into an image and you're getting it ready for print or getting it ready for web or, or um, a digital presentation, you're always going to lose just this ever slight edge. You're always going to lose a little, little tiny bit. Um, and as an artist, it's probably a good idea if you're going to be doing anything with your work um, other than just selling the original paintings or even trying to just, you know, display them online, is to get used to the fact that when you paint edge to edge, that whatever's right on that edge really shouldn't be that important. You want to be able to lose just a fraction of that and, and not have it affect the painting. So there we've uh, cropped into that. And I'm going to zoom in 
and look at the edges and make sure you know I don't have any um, places where I've missed right around the edge where I'm showing the background and not the image itself this looks pretty good just that simple crop right there um, did it so I've got nice clean edges don't worry about seeing some of the dust and things in here when you're really up close because in fact you're looking at it through uh, a microscope um, sometimes you can remove some of it um, for example the healing brush tool is very nice to get rid of some of the obvious pieces of dust um, so that when you reproduce the artwork it looks nice and clean um, oops did not mean to do that so we're gonna undo that um, let's go back around let's see here everything else looks pretty good I'm gonna get rid of a couple of these little spectral highlights which are probably just reflections off of the varnish on the on the paint and uh, not actually intentional and we zoom out there now now that we've done that we're on to sizing now if I go and look at image in Photoshop image size I see that I've got uh, a native 300 pixels per inch for 13.3 inches by 10.9 inches which um, the original size was we said 14.25 or something by 11 but our closest standard size is 11 by 14 so I'm going to stop there where it's 11.4 by 14 and I'm just going to say okay we've got uh, resampling set to enlargement we are enlarging it by a half an inch not much uh, but still um, you want to pay attention to this and use the one that closest matches what you're doing either up sampling or down sampling and we're gonna say okay now if I want this to be a standard size I need to clip the canvas I need to crop into it and rather than using the crop tool and doing something like this I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna escape out of there um, escape and I'm going to use the canvas size tool so in the image canvas size in Photoshop and we have 11.43. I like this bubble on the edge there. I know it's right on the edge. I really don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose any detail here. Um, but down here, if I'm going to try and make this a standard size, I'm going to lose anything at all. This right here, I don't think is going to really affect the composition. There's no detail in there that's going to um, matter too much. The viewer's eye is really focused on, on the woman in the water here. Um, and most of your composition really is, is happening right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to be 11. So we have a standard 11 by 14 size. And I'm going to click on that so that I'm losing this area down here. I'm not using it, losing it uniformly. Like, in other words, I'm not going to lose two tenths of an inch here and then two tenths at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and, and in this case, I'm, oops, I'm going to force it so that we lose that four tenths of an inch right there there you are now we have a standard 11 by 14 image that will be easy to print and easy to frame um, if I was going to add if I wanted to sign that uh, what we do is add a margin um, rather than letting your printer figure out margins for you if you're going to be printing um, certainly what we do here is we add it to the canvas size. So in this case, I'm going to go relative and I'm going to say I want an inch on all sides of margin, of white margin. That'll give me area to sign, it'll give um, the framer um, area to mat, uh, although if we do that this won't be a, a standard 11 by 14 anymore. But we're going to go ahead and add two inches on that which will mean an inch on all sides now we've got an inch right there the artist could sign a number of these right there uh, etc um, now if, now you've got a file that is completely ready to print if you print this size if you look at the size it's going to be 16 a sheet that is 16 by 13 and your image window right here is going to be 11 by 14 So once again, the, those are some of the basic things that we do to get a file ready for print. 
um, and make it a predictable size even if it's not true to the full size like this one where we didn't have enough camera power to reproduce this full size but we have a clean shot that can be used for the web uh, it's a predictable size this is a clean shot that can be used for the web and printing because um, it's an 11 by 14 image and we've got almost a true 300 pixels per inch straight out of the camera um, in any event we the tools that we really use for that are um, image in, in Photoshop image image size canvas size and the clone tool and healing brush tool and other such tools to clean up the edges so uh, when you produce it you don't have raggedy edges and things around the sides uh, hope this helped you thanks